The products of more than 250 Western companies were found in samples of destroyed or captured Russian weapons, Zelensky's office said. British Foreign Secretary David Cameron has appealed for U.S. lawmakers to approve new assistance to Ukraine, saying it would serve U.S. interests not to appease Russia. President Joe Biden's administration at the end of 2023 allocated a last batch of military aid to Ukraine as it struggles to persuade legislators of the rival Republican Party to approve some $61 billion in new funding. Fundamentally, there is a majority of Congress in support. We just need to find it, Cameron told reporters at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. The former conservative prime minister said that Ukraine's war affects Europe but is about American security, too. History demonstrates to us that if you appease an aggressor in Europe, the aggressor comes back for more, he said. Russian police suppressed a large protest in the far eastern region of Bashkortostan after an activist was imprisoned. The protest erupted after a court in the town of Baymak gave indigenous rights activist Fail Alsanov a four-year sentence in a penal colony. Some estimated that up to 3,000 of his supporters joined the protest, which would make it one of the biggest rallies in Russia since the beginning of its war against Ukraine. Large protests are uncommon in Russia because of the threat of arrests. Thousands of people have been arrested in the past two years for resisting the war. The Russian Ministry of Defense said Ukraine lost up to 25 military personnel and two Gvozdika self-propelled artillery units in the Kherson area in one day. It said in a statement that, in the Kherson direction, fire damage to units of the 35th and 37th Marine Brigades in the areas of the settlements of Tyajinki and Ivanovka, Kherson region, caused the losses of the Ukrainian armed forces of up to 25 military personnel, three vehicles, and two Gvozdika self-propelled artillery units. Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova said the security agreement between Ukraine and the UK meant that Ukraine had no hope of resolving the conflict through negotiations. She said at a news conference that Ukraine was being used as a bargaining chip in the adventures of the Anglo-Saxons and kept on the current Euro-Atlantic and anti-Russian confrontational course. Regional Governor Vyacheslav Gladkov said Ukraine's air force bombed the outskirts of the village of Repiakovka, Belgorod region, damaging a power line and cutting off electricity to the village residents. There were no casualties. There was damage to the power line, and subscribers in the village of Repiakovka were cut off he wrote on his Telegram channel. A Ukrainian kamikaze drone that fell in the village of Sverdlakovo, Korsk region, damaged a residential building, according to Roman Starovoy, the governor of the region. None of the residents were injured, he wrote in his Telegram channel, adding that the facade of a residential building was damaged by shrapnel, windows were broken, and a car was damaged near it. He said regional authorities would help residents with repairs. A British intelligence report said Russia would likely have to rethink restricting the areas of operation of its aircraft after the Russian A-50 long-range radar detection aircraft was destroyed on Sunday. The UK's defense ministry said on X that the A-50 is vital to the Russian air surveillance picture over the battle space. It also said the Russian Air Force had eight A-50 aircraft, which could probably cope with the loss of the board but the increased stress on the remaining airframes and the loss of the crew will likely limit longer-term mission sustainability. Roman Rochko, head of the city's military administration, said Russian shelling of Kherson from the occupied left bank of the Dnipro River killed one civilian and injured another one. He wrote on Telegram that the enemy hit the Dnipro district of the city several times. At least one fire started after the hits. The information is being verified. He also said the man who died was 37 years old. The man was on the street when the Russians attacked, he said. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said Germany would give military aid to Ukraine worth 7 billion euros, 7.6 billion dollars, this year after talking to U.S. President Joe Biden on the phone. The European Union's chief executive said he was sure that all 27 member states would agree to jointly give more financial aid to Ukraine. Russia's defense ministry said its air defense forces shot down seven Vilka surface-to-air missiles and four drones over the Russian region of Belgorod. Ukraine's army said it had 98 encounters with the invading Russian forces in the areas of Avdiivka, Mariinsky, Bakhmut, Lyman, and Kherson. It said the Ukrainian forces killed 730 Russian soldiers and wiped out dozens of tanks, armored vehicles, artillery systems and drones, as well as one cruise missile in the past day. Rostislav Sherma deputy head of Zelensky's office, 
said the Ukraine Reconstruction Bank being set up with help from BlackRock and JP Morgan Chase had at least $500 million in committed capital and could launch in five to six months with close to $1 billion. He have hired BlackRock and JP Morgan last year to help set up a fund to collect public capital that could draw private investment for Ukraine's post-war reconstruction, which could cost hundreds of billions of dollars. Sherma said BlackRock and JP Morgan found between 25 and 30 of the about 280 projects that had applied to the fund so far as ones that could be taken seriously. Ukraine's Foreign Minister Dmitro Kaleba said his country's goal for 2024 was to take control over its skies, because the one who controls the skies will decide when and how the war will end. At the World Economic Forum in Davos, Kaleba asked for patience from Ukraine's main Western supporters and said that with the right support, Ukraine could win. We are fighting a powerful enemy, a very big enemy that doesn't sleep. It takes time, Kaleba said. We beat them on the land in 2022. We beat them in the sea in 2023, and we are totally focused on beating them in the air in 2024. Poland's President Andrzej Duda said Ukraine could not join NATO before the war with Russia was over, but that the process could begin even at this stage. He said Ukraine should get an invitation to NATO, which would start the process of debating this issue in the parliaments of the alliance's member countries. He said this was very important for the morale of Ukraine's defenders. At a meeting of the 31-nation military alliance's top brass, the chair of the NATO military committee, Admiral Rob Bauer, called for a whole-of-society approach to the challenge that goes beyond military planning. He said as he opened the meeting that, we need public and private actors to change their mindset from an era in which everything was predictable, foreseeable, controllable and focused on efficiency to an era in which anything can happen at any time. An era in which we need to expect the unexpected. Bauer also said, we need a war-fighting transformation of NATO to be fully effective in the future. Russia's defense ministry said its air defense forces shot down seven Vilka surface-to-air missiles and four drones over the Russian region of Belgorod. It also said it destroyed four RM-70 Vampire rockets and intercepted two drones later. Seriai Naive a Ukrainian military commander, said the measure was necessary to let the Ukrainian military exchange fire and destroy the enemy without worrying that they can harm our citizens. He said in a Telegram channel statement that the border in the north of our country is a line of contact with the enemy with all its inherent combat actions. These hostilities can cause the death of both civilians and military personnel, their capture, and the destruction of entire border villages and towns. He also said, Every civilian should clearly understand that being near the border with Russia is dangerous. A state of emergency was declared in the southern Russian city of Voronezh after air defenses downed five supposed Ukrainian drones. The attack injured two children. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called on his country's allies to increase their support for Kyiv to prevent Russian President Vladimir Putin from winning the war. He spoke at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Putin rejected Ukraine's peace plan and said Russia would keep the territory it had seized in Ukraine. Ukrainian authorities said the overnight drone attacks in the Black Sea port of Odessa injured at least three people and destroyed residential buildings. The Ukrainian military said the Russian attack lasted for at least three hours and targeted Odessa and other southern regions. Drone debris damaged a gas pipe and a dozen cars and hit residential buildings in one of the port's districts, Ukraine's interior ministry said. It said it evacuated about 130 people. Russian missiles injured at least 17 people, two of them critically, and hit residential buildings in the city of Kharkiv. Regional Governor Ola Sinihubov said 2S, 300 missiles struck buildings in the center of Ukraine's second largest city, and 14 people went to hospital.